figured out your issues with kicking in the season by just not simply needing to kick them? Uh, that would be the, uh, that's the easiest um, field goal, you know, answer. Uh, and I talk, you know, I continue to ask Greg, I'm like, you're going to make them, right? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. And so, so we're not, we're not planning on using you. We just practice extra points all day. Uh, and that's really something that we've been able to do. I, Arthur and Todd and, and all those guys on offense do a fantastic job of getting everybody involved and running things that we've done since April uh, and then trying to add a new uh, few plays every week so that the players um, can have some carryover with what we've done for a long time against a bunch of coverages and then some scheme things that we think can help us. Have you maybe been a little bit more aggressive down there because of the, the kicking issues and the unknown? In every week's different. I really think that, you know, there have been times where we feel like um, that that because of the way that the game's going or the who we're playing that we we always need to be aggressive. I would um, say that that would that would change based on how the game's going. Um, you know, he's done a great job with. I mean, as many however many touchdowns that we've scored since Greg's been here, I feel like the operation and the way that he's kicked the football on the extra points um, it is a good indication. Uh, that he's confident and that he's swinging it well. And I think that if you look around the league, you know, some kickers have missed as many extra points as they have field goals. And, and, and we know that that's a different um, kick now than what it was. So uh, to me, those, those extra points are, are, are field goals. How did Humphrey's look on his first day back in a while? And how much could he help you if he's able to go? Well, again, everybody that's available, everybody that can, you know, all, all our players that we, we need them all, you know, so he's going to help us. Um, you know, I would say that he looked um, looked good. We'll, we'll need to know more today. We'll, we'll practice today. We'll have third down. Uh, those will be opportunities for, for him to get back out there and work with work with Ryan and work with the quarterbacks. Mike, to talk to the players, <clears throat> they, they've said the message has stayed pretty consistent from last season to this season. But for you personally, were there lessons from your first year as a head coach that you feel like has made you a better coach this year? I mean, there's always um, – you have to take something from, from every year, from every season, from every week, and try to uh, you know, improve. You look at the game and you look at uh, how you prepared the team, maybe what you did at practice or, or things that you did with, within the game plan offensively or defensively and on special teams. Um, you know, I felt like there were times we played well and then we're just inconsistent. And I think I've tried to stay consistent in my pr approach to the team. Um, you know, and not just, you know, get, you know, lo lose my cool and, and, and try to just continue to coach and, and fix the things that need to be fixed. Stay, stay as positive as I possibly could be, um, as hard as that may seem to, to, to be to imagine. Um, and, and when we aren't playing well, I have to make sure that everybody's held accountable and we're pointing things out, but you got to give them answers to, to fix it. It's not, you can't just say, well, we had to play better. And you know, we have to give them answers and we have to, to continue to work technique and fundamentals um, during practice, and you know the, the schedule. I mean, I spent a lot of time on the schedule, making sure that the players have rest and that there's recovery um, at different parts in the season. Uh, using those numbers and see how many, you know, the, the tracking numbers to see how far guys are, are running and the mileage and the speed, uh, and, and when they need to, to, to pull back and practice. Was there any? Re reoccurring theme when you put together your staff because it's kind of unique the way all you guys literally roll your sleeves up and you're out there in the drills with the players. I mean, I think that the biggest thing would be loyalty. Uh, this this is a hard league and hard business, whether you're coaching in high school, um, college, uh, or professional sports or business. Uh, you want to hire people that want to uh, ascend to be at the top of their profession. But in doing that, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. And sometimes guys will undercut people to, to get there. People will undercut other people. And I think that I learned that loyalty is critical uh, to, to be able to, um, to win. Everybody's going to have a different opinion. But what has to happen is there has to be one voice. Um, you have to listen to, to everybody's input and then make decisions. And that the people that are giving input need to have um, the ability to, to respect that and, and have their opinion heard. Um, but what happens in different cases is guys will go into rooms and say, you know, I really didn't want to do it this way, but, you know, this is how so-and-so wants to do it. 
and the players see that and, and they respond uh, negatively to that. Um, so I, I love our staff. Uh, I love their families. I love seeing their, their kids here um, during training camp and, and on walkthroughs. You know, I mean, Taylor dresses up in a fancy Santa Claus suit and, and gives presents out to, to all the guy, the kids and the families and uh, the players' family. So it's, um, I would say loyalty uh, is, is the biggest thing that I'm looking for. And then we'll, we'll try to teach everybody else after that. Were you totally taken by surprise when you got traded to Kansas City? Or no, Kansas? no. I walked in. Guys, I mean, you, sometimes you get exactly what you ask for. You know, and that's a long time ago. So I'm not even going to talk about that. Like, I wasn't. Wasn't surprised. In terms of, uh, in terms of the, the staff, what gave you confidence to hire Arthur in the first place? And then when you elevated him, what made you, you think he was ready for that? Um, Arthur had been here. He'd worked through a bunch of different coaches. He's coached players. I evaluated it. We played against him, played against his tight ends. They were always well prepared. They were physical. Uh, Delaney was a very productive player. Um, they were hard to go against. They, were, they blocked. They were physical. They finished. Um, came here, was excited to interview him, and, uh, and knew quickly that he was the, the right guy to continue on as our tight ends coach. Um, then when Matt um, got his opportunity, uh, to go to Green Bay, um, you know Matt. Matt, I would say, gave him an endorsement. Um, Arthur also was was outside my office at five in the morning and, and wanted and wanted me to know that he wanted the job. And I think that that's also important. And sometimes people don't really know um, what you want until you tell them. And you know, I, I think he he was always about the team. He was always about uh, loyalty. He was loyal to the head coaches that he worked for uh, and, and the teams that he's worked for. Not to mention, he was very well qualified and has done a great job. When it's really in the same like in terms of, of Jack Conklin and, and his improvement, uh, uh, you know, throughout the season. And if you have seen some, is it more a case of physically getting completely healthy, or is there more to it than that? You know, I think with the offensive line and, and, and a lot of positions, this technique is is, very, is critical. Um, I think his technique's improved. I think he's focused hard on on his technique. I think he's you know, taking care of his body. Um, and I think he's playing with some confidence. When it's particularly cold, what kind of things with the field or the ball do players need to be concerned with or aware of, maybe? Um, I, I don't think that the temperature necessarily does anything. Maybe the, the you know, the, the, if, the, if the ground's not heated, if there's not coils underneath there, you, it could be playing on a hard surface. Um, but when it's cold, you know, and, and you get hit, you know, it doesn't feel good. And so, um, you know, we're, we're going to focus on, on, on playing and understanding whatever the conditions are. Um, you know, that if the, if the field's hard, we'll have the right kind of cleats that we'll try to do everything. If it rains, if it snows, you know, we'll have to not let those things affect us. Speaking of getting hit, uh, I know you're not the biggest social media person, but there's video of you in Baltimore getting trucked on the sideline by a ref. What happened? Um, well, you know, that's why we get up in the morning. Stretch and I get up so early in the morning to go and, and get in the weight room so that when you get illegally uh, blocked in the back like, like I did, uh, it doesn't hurt. Um, I didn't go to the ground. He didn't knock me down. Eugene can run, and he's big, and he's fast. And, and I was just embarrassed because I said, if, we get a, if I get a penalty, the players aren't going to – you know, I mean, after all this stuff I tell them and all this crap, I talk to them about penalties and being disciplined and keeping your composure and – here I am halfway out on the field looking up at the, at the play on the Jumbotron. So, um, you know, I, the get back coach got to do a better job. I got to do a better job of getting the hell out of the way. Um, but but I, I showed the team this morning because, you know, I knew they were going to laugh at me anyway. So I figured I might, I might as well show them first. What was, uh, what did they say? What was the feedback? They laughed. You know what I mean? Like they do a lot of stuff that I do. Did it hurt? No, it didn't hurt. <laughs> Yep. from playing more to, to less. Better. Just, just an amazing uh, leader. Uh, and again, you have to have those types of players. There's all different types of players when you look at a roster. Um, and, and, and as players, you go through this different um, phases of your career. And, and again, I, we use him as an example, um, as an undrafted player who earned his, his right in this league on special teams um, that ascended to, to a starting player that, that moved teams. Um, and still was a, a starting player, but also was a, a was a contributor on special teams. He's our special teams captain. 
it, it means a lot to him. He's been supportive. He's always prepared, but he supports Rashawn and Jayon and, and David, who you know, he was 10 or 12 years ago. Absolutely. I mean, he's a mentor, you know, and, and the, the one thing that, that leaders do is they don't just sit in their, their position room and they don't just focus on um, their own uh, position. You know, all our leaders, I feel like, ha have been able to branch out and find a way to connect with, with guys uh, on, across the ball, uh, guys on different positions, and um, you know, I think that's, you certainly need that. Uh, he's got a length. He's got athleticism. He um, he's a very instinctive player. Um, I, I would say that before the snap, he knows whether it's man or zone, um, and he's going to run his routes accordingly. He's got a great relationship with the quarterback. Um, he, he's physical down the field. He's hard to tackle. Um, you know, he's very you know seventy seventy two percent catch percentage. You know he's got a hundred and you know, 36 targets or whatever it is, 97 catches. Um, and so it's a difficult matchup. Um, he's willing to block. And, uh, you know, I've got a lot of um, admiration for, for Travis and, and what he's done in his career. I mean, that's, you know, you grow up playing high school football in the state of Ohio, and that's what you get. Several of you guys have mentioned the idea this week that there's no 53rd guy or no 46th guy on this team. How important is it? To you, that you've kind of instilled that thinking, that or sixty third, or sixty fourth, you know, what I mean, whatever it may be, we're just trying to, you know, John and I look at it every week and every day, and we say, you know, what do we need? Who do, who are we looking at? Let's work these guys out, and is this guy going to fit into to our plans uh, better than than the guys that we have? Is this guy working? Is this guy on the practice squad? Is he continuing to work, or is he just basically plateaued and he wants to? Just, just come to work and, and run a card. And um, we, we always ask those guys, and, and I think that they can look around the, the room and say, hey, that guy was on the practice squad and he caught a touchdown and, <laughs> in, a, in a big game, or um, he, he's returning punts, or he's now playing. And I think that I hope that that's some sort of uh, motivation for these guys to continue to work uh, and develop. And, I, and our coaches coach them. You know, they, they, they work with them in individual drills. They, they watch tape of, of their show team reps at the end of the week. You know, maybe a different defense, and they may be doing a different card, but they look at their technique, and they, they talk to them about their fundamentals, and, and we make sure that that stuff happens. But you want that guy to know his role is as important as Ryan or Derek or? Yeah, there's no, the, the mentality that I, I guess I try to live my life with, that, that there's no job too small uh, to help us win, and whether that's Lynn Koya or Johnny that, that, that keeps our building clean, um, or Anwar or Brittany that, that makes our breakfast, or Hoss and Big John and Joey that uh, make sure that our coaching gear and our players' equipment's all taken care of, or Todd and his staff. You know, there's a lot of people that go into um, an organization and that, that helps us win, and I always make sure our players um, understand that. You know, you know, Andy's Andy's been a head coach in this league for 21 years, and the, and the league's a better place because because Andy Reid uh, and his family are in it. Um, you know, Tyler had the opportunity to be coached by by one of his sons, Spencer, at, at Boston College in the weight room, and you know, Tyler immediately took to him, and he's like, "This this guy is great. I can just you can tell that, you know, Andy's his dad, and he's been a great mentor to me uh, in this in this process of." Not only transitioning this league from college, but also uh, becoming a, a head coach and, and, and being willing to, to answer questions about you know, what it is that I need to do and try to get better or how to get, get this job or interview or things that come up. Um, he's an unbelievably um, smart and, and talented play caller. Uh, I think 13 of his 21 years, his offenses have been in the top 10 in scoring. Uh, they know how to score. He knows how to put points on the board. Um, you can see his relationship with his players. Uh, they love him, um, and they play hard. What has the last game given you as a lead blocker that maybe you didn't have when you didn't have an actual fullback? 
Um, you know, Prue was doing a nice job. I mean, Prue wasn't um, – Prue, Prue was getting to all the blocks that we needed. You know, I think the one thing with Kari is that it got there a little quicker just because of his skill set. I mean, he's a smaller, faster player than what Prue is. Um, you know, in some of these runs, it, it gets dirty. It, it's not what the picture looks like. And so, you know, if you have a guy that has played running back or carried the ball, he can maybe see the hole and – see where the opening is that he has to kind of come back and, and get to. Uh, and he's caught the ball well. Uh, he's played special teams for us. Uh, and, and again, it's been a good you know, addition to us, uh, our, our roster in the middle of the season. You guys have had some extra fuel the last <coughs> few weeks from the Brady hype video and Earl Thomas and things that they said. But your team has stayed focused and really hasn't said anything. They've just kind of stayed the course. Is that just who the team is, or is that something that the staff has instilled in them. What, what is that? You know, we, we just try to come every day, work, prepare, find out what it is that we need to do to improve, uh, to work on the opponent. Um, we try to ignore whatever the outside noise is, focus on us, um, and do everything we can to try to win. And it, that's th those things all happen. Those aren't. You know, everything can get turned, twisted sideways. We, we, we talk a lot during the week as far as, you know, putting the team first and, and making sure we're concentrating on us.